News update this day in history. The Battle of Idris IV, October 1st, 2544 SET, the battle that changed humanity. The Teveran War had raged into its second year. Although the United Planets of Earth had managed to claim some decisive victories, the Teveran were unrelenting. Gaining ground in the Centauri system and pushing UPE forces as far back as the Farron system. By late August 2544 SET, High General Trevor Borland had grown impatient. In a strategy meeting with his advisors, he expressed a fear that by letting the battle lines equalize, he could see both sides becoming complacent and settling into a war of attrition. He wanted to quote-unquote unbalance the Teveran to challenge their expectations of how we had been engaging them in warfare. Over the next week, Borland, High Command, and his advisors sketched out the skeletal framework of what would become Operation Nemesis. Military intelligence had identified a Teveran shipyard on the surface of Idris IV that served as the main repair facility and launching point for a majority of the Teveran fighters in the system, as well as the operational hub for several unknown Teveran structures that they were building around the globe. Nemesis intended to seize and occupy this territory to act as a forward operating position to gain a foothold back into Idris. The UPE military's research and development department had accelerated production on their new R27HE hull shredder torpedoes, and by September 17th had them combat ready for the mission. Naval forces assembled by the Farron jump point while Army and Marine ground units trained relentlessly using then-untested planetary invasion techniques. Operation Nemesis was a daring and divisive plan. Upon entry into Idris, the initial invasion wave of carriers, destroyers, corvettes, and transports were to ignore all Teveran cap ships and push into the system, attempting to drag the Teveran into a fight above Idris IV. Specified ships would break off along the way to form a defensive line between the target and the Farron jump point. Army and Marine ships would invade the planet's surface, seize military control points, and hold until a steady stream of reinforcements could enter the system to back up the defensive line and reconnect to the initial wave who were in orbit besieging the planet. The operation officially launched at 2544-0930-1345 SET. Enemy contact occurred immediately after entering Idris. Customized missile ships entered the jump point first, launching a full spread of rockets before the rest of the fleet arrived. The initial wave commenced its push toward Idris IV. The Teveran capital ships tried to intercept and engage the UPE Navy, but the fleet maintained course and speed toward Idris IV. Finally, once the Army and Marines deployed to the planet, the Navy turned to fight. The battle above Idris IV began in earnest as fighters swarmed up from the surface. Three transports were lost during descent before the fighting spilled over onto the ground. The 112th Infantry Battalion under Colonel Tio Koshi assaulted the shipyard, designated The Hill, along with Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie mechanized companies on the loan from the 3rd Expeditionary Unit as support. After six hours of combat, the 112th and the Marines took The Hill. For the moment, it seemed like the operation was going to be a resounding success. Then, the moment passed. The Teveran unleashed a devastating strike against the fleet in orbit above Idris IV. The structures that the Teveran were building turned out to be a prototype planetary defense system. Two carriers were annihilated in seconds. The remaining UPE ships scattered to avoid the fire from the planet. Even worse, the new hull shredder torpedoes began to fail, either exploding in their tubes or failing to arm when fired. On the surface, the Teveran forces that had abandoned the hill returned with renewed vigor. Hearing reports from the ships, the 112th realized that they were going to be on their own very soon. Their mechanized escort was already down 50% of their original numbers. The soldiers were nowhere near as familiar with the Teveran installation as their enemies and were having difficulty securing it. The next planetary rotation would last a lifetime. The naval vessels battled wave after wave of Teveran fighters above Idris IV, refusing to give an inch, knowing that any space loss would certainly co-sign the troops below to a death sentence. The 112th suffered a devastating loss when a Teveran fighter strafed the compound, dropping an anti-matter bomb that destroyed Colonel Koshi and his command staff. 
The ground forces became scattered, demoralized, and the Teverans seemed to pick up on it. The last remnants of 3rd EU Bravo Company died in the push. The remaining Marines on the 112th fell back to their inner defensive position. Major Michael Colliery of the 112th Battalion Charlie Company was trying to orchestrate an extraction plan when an unseen sniper's bullet took his life. His second-in-command, a young, ambitious officer, Captain Ivar Messer, then assumed command of the company. Messer began calling danger-close bombing runs from the fleet's retaliator bombers while he organized ambush points with the surviving soldiers. For hours, the bombers dumped payload after payload of high-explosive ordnance on the converging Teveran forces. Messer didn't stop there, also organizing a small recon force to destroy the planetary defense system that was still devastating the fleet above. The group commandeered a downed Teveran skiff and slipped past the lines. The infiltration team, led by Sergeant Adam Kor, managed to not only discover the nexus of the planetary defense system, but overtake and assume control of it. They turned the devastating weapon against the massing Teveran fleet, long enough for the UPE naval reinforcements to enter the system. The Battle of Idris IV had taken another turn. Over the next few hours, the Teveran forces began to fall back. Unfortunately, Kor and his team had to abandon and detonate the defense system before reinforcements arrived. As the smoke cleared on Idris IV, over a hundred capital ships, thousands of fighters, and 70,000 lives had been lost on both sides. Messer and his forces still held the hill. His actions had decisively turned the tide of the battle. The victory at Idris IV would galvanize the populace in the UPE, drive recruitment rates up, and build on the momentum to push further into the Teveran systems. At the center of all this, the young, ambitious Captain Ivar Messer, whose taste of power would begin to push him on a path that would change the course of human history in a very different way. End feed. Coming up next... Year 2546, Commander Messer. Ivar Messer, now promoted to commander, brings the captured Teveran leader to the UPE floor. He rides the popularity of his victory to become High General. Claiming the tribunal is an outdated system and cultivating a fear of the Xi'an Empire, Messer proposes the creation of a new single office with the title of Prime Citizen. Upon election as the first, and last, prime citizen, it isn't long before he restructures the government into the new United Empire of Earth, or UEE, and anoints himself Imperator, ushering in an age of unprecedented expansion and colonization. Would you like to know more? Hey guys, if you enjoy this series and you'd like to support me on Patreon, the link is here. If you'd like to subscribe to this channel, click here. And for the next video, click here. And as always, thanks for watching.